Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Manny again. I have a live tracking session. I wanted to do a breakdown, a little bit kind of the same as the one before, but I, I have a little bit uh, different selection of microphones. Usually a rule of thumb is use a lot of dynamics on a setup like this, but I am a little bit more daring and use some condensers and some tube condensers at it, as that being said. So uh, let's go down the breakdown. This is a band called um, Slashes from San Diego. Really, really, really great band. Uh, they've decided to cut a full length with me. So this setup symbolically is something that will pretty much, even though there'll be multiple sessions, will probably be about the same. So let's talk about the drums. Obviously everybody's playing in the same room. Um, that's a uh, Supra amp. And then next to it is a, I think it's called a Jazz 55. It's a smaller, basically a jazz course I'll show you. Uh, the bass rig is over there. It's a really tiny, it's a polycorg. I always think those sound like John Paul Jones. And I'll run down that mic. So on the drums, I do have a lot of mics, but after this video of showing you what I used, I'll have a video number two of the sounds isolated and, and a breakdown of what I've been using here. So you can actually hear how all these mics sounded on why this guy was playing as loud as he want and this guy was playing as loud as he wanted. Uh, important about this setup is I have the guitar player. He's the singer as well, but he wasn't using the mic, just playing. But I have it so his amps are baffled off. But it, when he's standing right here looking at the drummer, he's still getting a little bit of his guitar into his ear. So it's not total isolation, so he can kind of feel his guitar. Same with the bass player. He's gonna be playing about right here looking at the drummer. He can see him. I make sure my baffles are, you know, it's got good view of the drummer. Um, his small rig is over here, but he can still fill the bass. Rule of thumb when doing um, a live setup like this, make sure that all the mics, the back of the mics are facing away from the drums. For instance, there's the bass rig pointed that way. The back of the mic is pointing to the drums. On the guitar rig, it's the same thing. There's two mics in there I'll show you. Each one of them, the rear of the mic is facing the drums, and this is for the best cancellation of the drums coming into those mics. So I wanna do is I wanna isolate the guitar. I don't wanna hear any drums in it. I wanna isolate the bass. I don't wanna hear any drums in it. And when I isolate the drums, there is a little bit of glue and a little bit of, um, you know, an overpass of some tonals and sounds that come in but not too overwhelming. And like I said, I'll show you the video that you can actually hear. So the drums, I have a tube mic. That's called the Mojave MA37. It's a new mic. It's a copy or a design based off the Sony C37. And this is called an MA37. Uh, once again, made by Mojave. That is a new mic out right now that you can buy. Now, if you, it's a tube mic, it's very dark. If you've had a chance to use a real Sony C37 like the way I have, it's very reminiscent of that mic. It's different than other tube microphones. It's really dark and you have to, it's a lot of money to pay for something that may not be your Swiss Army knife of your studio, but when I use it, I really, really love it. It sounds dark like an old Altec Coke bottle, 1950s mic, and I have two of those, and that was actually some of the beauty of why I like this mic. I put it on the floor, and as you can tell, I have carpet, but I put it on some plywood, and I have it facing down towards the plywood. So I'm getting kind of the reflection coming off the snare and the kick drum, and also I put this drum case here, so I tried to utilize a little bit of a kind of some sound from coming around the back of the mic. You, if you have a baffle or a gobo, you can use it, but I was just being creative, being weird. So I have that mic for the room sound. Then for the drums, I have a 57. Below it is a, uh, called a P48, which is one of the, I think it's the third maybe style AKG 414s that came out. Inside is a brass capsule that I had Heisman place for me so it's a Heisman brass capsule which is a C12 capsule uh, the toms are wonderful audio technicas 230s there's another one on that one right there 
And on the hi-hats, thank God I invested in these because they really do work. This is called an AKG D224E. It looks kind of like a condenser, but it's not. There is two elements in it. There's an element here and an element in the bottom. I saw a guy that had foam around this part. And I was like, is that guy crazy? No, he wasn't. <laughs> there is a sound hole right here for a low end and high end. And it's incredible. This, these same elements are inside John Bonham's kick drum, but they put it within this uh, small chassis and it is a dynamic, insane. One of the best hi-hat mics I've ever used. And the reason I use it, Ross Robinson had used it and I had done a session um, after he'd worked with an artist and they told me that I should get one. So I got one, no regrets. They're a little expensive, but they're so amazing. On this particular song, it really mattered. I usually sometimes have a, a mic that comes down this side and hangs above the beater, but I didn't use it this time. Um, now, this is called a Myberg M1. And this is a mic made out of Germany. Um, it's a brand new mic. It looks like a old style mic, but it's not a copy of a 251 or a C12 or anything that you would think about. It sounds like its own animal. I'm going to be using this on vocals, but I had it on the overhead and I can only describe it as a laser beam of sound that came straight down with the drums. And it, even though it's a tube mic, it didn't pick up the bass rig and barely the guitar rig. It was really, really, not to be over dramatic, it was beautiful sounding. So I got a Myberg M1 on the overheads. Um, right there is the Myberg power supply. Woo, there it is. And there's the Mojave. So I have two tube mics, one for the room one for a single overhead. And like I said, in the next video, I'll give you a sample of those sounds. Um, and that's pretty much it for the kit. Uh, we're gonna move around to the guitar rig. So he has a super amp. And, well, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. There is a, ah, it's a little dark down here, but it's a buyer. 201 one of my favorite mics that's a buyer 201 and this is the uh you can't see it either but it's a mini jazz chorus in there and that mic has a sm7 on it which is usually a vocal mic this one i hope you can see a little bit better this is a uh, Mini Brute by Polytone, or po uh, I think it's Polytone. Amazing amp, it has a built-in distortion on the top. That little mic in there is a Lavalier Shore SM98, an original one. They use that actually on Rage Against the Machine and a lot of other bands. Cool pedals. Um, and that's the breakdown. I'm gonna try to get you or give you a good idea. And I, like I said, you just want to set everyone up around the drums and you just try to get this magical moment of everybody being super comfortable and being able to visually see the drummer from the guitar player, singer view, bass player to the drummer. And I've also lined up my room so the kind of no fly zone for people to walk through is obviously this area. And I think it's important, I use colored cables, so if I need to find, like, I already had an issue with one of these cables, so I'm easily able to go, oh, the red cable is the bottom of the snare, and I can follow it down easy. So all my cables are wrapped and colored, and even though it looks a little bit anarchy, there is some, oh, fuck, I didn't even talk about my kick drum mic, sorry about that. Um, that mic right here is called a Heisman Type 19. It has a, uh, I think it has a 47 capsule in it, or 48, 47 capsule, I think. And it's pretty, whew, man, one of my favorite kick drum mics of recent. That mic is a Bayer 380, which is the famous kick drum mic by Bayer. 
but there's a guy in Nashville cold pickings and if you get a buyer I think it's called a 50 GX he can switch out the internals and if he has the actual capsules from a real 380 which come out of headphones if you can find them he'll switch out the internals for you and pretty soon you get a 380 so that might probably cost me 400 bucks but to get a real 380 is close to seven eight hundred dollars almost double or triple the price so I recommend you being thrift with that and you can get the really same results so that's it. Um, if you go back into my room, it's not that big. Outside is downtown LA skyline, but we're just, windows are closed. And uh, this is my live tracking of a band. Everybody's in a room, there's no ISO boost. But once again, check out the next video on the same setup with the slashes part two, and I'll show you the sounds that I got here. Thanks for sticking around. Talk to you soon. Hey everyone, this is Manny here. Uh, I just didn't come in running from the other room of the band. The band's already left. This is just a kind of a tutorial of how it is to track a band live. I've no, I, I know I've done a few of these. I just thought I would share this one. I was really excited about the band, the session. Using some new mics, I'll share with you, and hopefully you'll dig. Once again, this is a grain of salt. Uh, my technique for recording live bands is a little bit strange, but I am utilizing... A bunch of dudes playing in one room with amps in there there's no kind of assembly line recording this is capturing a real guitar a real bass and real drums no samples it sounds raw and nowadays it could sound foreign to you because everybody's sound in places but this is real engineering real mics i am lucky to have a few mics that i usually wouldn't have in my arsenal and i thought i would use them one of the first ones is the Myberg M1. Andrew Myberg was nice enough to uh, let me use one here. I don't own it. It's not mine. It's a very expensive mic. It's one of those mics where you really make a commitment. If you're going to buy one, you are serious about recording and you are going to weep a little bit, but somehow be happy. Don't tell your wife you bought it. <laughs> um, anyways, the M1 is just a magnificent mic. It's not a copy of a... 251 or C12 it's its own animal its own beast I love it it's made in Germany it is just wow world class so I put this as an overhead I have used it as vocals but the overhead was amazing because it was like a laser beam right above the drum set even though I had amps in the room blasting as loud as they wanted to be the mic really gave a nice image of the drum set the next mic up I have is a Mojave MA37. That is also a brand new mic. That is a copy of a Sony C37. Uh, I did um, I did these shows for Warren Heward called Produce Like a Pro, and they were nice enough to let us use a Mojave. It's called One Mic, One Band, so I was using it a few weeks ago, and I still have it, and I've had the luxury of being able to use it when I can, so I am going to have to return this in the coming week. But we got to use it here. Hopefully you can hear it. I do love it. I think it smokes the real Sony C37, which costs double the price. I will say that the Mojave MA37 may have been one of the newest mics that makes me very happy. The same with Myberg M1. And then lastly, of the new mics that just warm my heart, is the Heisman Type 19. Now, Heisman makes capsules. He's famous all over the world for making capsules for stam audio and he has his own heisman brand he has 47s and 48s and just whew, that guy can make a mic anyways i'm nice enough to have a type 19 which is a brand new mic i think it's under a thousand over at vintage king if you shop there this mic is incredible maybe one of my favorite kick drum mics the capsule is a brass capsule it's a 47 capsule and if that if you're familiar with those that's like a FET 47 or one of the big boys the 47s and the 48s by Neumann this is that capsule within a tank looks like Darth Vader's head and you can strike it with the drumstick and it will not be ruining the mic so it was made the kind of small profile fits really well, like above toms, pianos. I'm using it for a kick drum. It's probably going to stay there forever. Once again, I don't own that mic either. But the Heisman, the Myberg, 
and the Mojave are all brand new mics of this era and they are just incredible and that makes me really happy that I don't need to go out and find a vintage mic. So here it is, this is the Slashes from San Diego. It's a live performance, they're all playing in the room together, it's crazy. That's them all playing at one time. Here are the drums soloed. That's the Myberg. So that's the Myberg solo by itself. It's kind of just giving me a picture of the drum set, but the amps are a little bit in it, but not what you would think on how loud these guys are playing. That's a buyer 380. Now one thing, if you're really precious, you're like, oh my God, there's guitars and bass in there. That's exactly the point. Santana to Back in Black to Iron Maiden. When they recorded those records, man, they were amps around fire that are bleeding out of rooms in the drum sets. I'm just kind of bringing it into one room, and I'm actually trying to make it work for me. So, once again, this is not wrong or right, but this is definitely the glue for rock and roll. <laughs> What you want is you don't want to have the drums and the guitars and you don't want to have the drums and the bass so that's what's going on here <laughs> drums in those great but here are the drums and they have everything in them but it's sweet These are both running through a vintage 1178. One was a rolling jazz chorus, the other one was a Supra. This is the Supra right here. That had a buyer 201. Now this has a, a jazz chorus with an SM, uh, SM7. Both. To let you know what I use on the guitar so there's no smoke and mirrors here, um, I have 1176, just a standard wave, not really doing anything, barely moving. 
I have the identical one on the other guitar, barely moving, doing a little. My little secret weapon is a deesser, kind of takes the edge off. So this is with the deesser on, and then I'll play you with it off. <laughs> Now, you may think, like, wow, that's a lot, but I used to work in analog tape, and I feel like the DSers are kind of, they take out the certain frequencies, like if you're running on a tape machine, and it's, this is just my own ears and my own opinion about it. So I make the guitars a little bit darker, a little bit more, uh, just melted a little bit, so check them out. <laughs> That thing that you're hearing when they get really wide is a little trick I do, which you can do. I just run, I'm running them out of an auxiliary, going into this channel, and this channel I'm strapping on just a time delay, and I'm just moving it around till I like the way it sounds. So this is where I call it a split. I'm just basically doing something an SPX90 would have done. <laughs> So the important thing about when I set this tracking session up was picking a good mic, getting the amps to sound right. If you notice, there's no EQ, there's nothing fancy on it. It's guitar sound, except, yeah, I am using an expensive retro compressor 1178, but that's something I've earned and I've worked for, and I really love it, and it does help me. So I could have used another plugin, maybe done something different. You don't need to have something like hardware. But for me, I want to make sure when I capture it, it's really badass. Here's the guitars again. You barely hear any drums in it, but that's what I wanted. So those toms are ATH 230s, they're discontinued. If you can find a drum pack, they are stealthy and wonderful. You probably get them for like 250. Now here's the hi-hat. I love this hi-hat. It's a 60s AKG 224E Beatle era. Oh my god, that's the f best thing ever. Here's the overhead. good with the symbols. Overhead to be really bright. Well, so this band, the Slashes, are some friends of mine. I've known them for a while, and I'm super pumped on this record I'm making with them. So they're nice enough to give me permission to rock this a bit, kind of give it a little bit of sneak preview of what's coming, but the record sounds outstanding. This is them playing live. This was recorded in the middle of July 2022. Um, one thing which they, when they recorded in the past, was capturing that magic 
the way I, my philosophy and the way they're doing it now, which are tracking it live instantaneously, it's a three piece band. So the singer, guitar player knows really quick that's the track. And that is, in some ways, the secret. Now, um, like I said, on the Master Fader, nothing fancy. This is just uh, a Fairchild, a normal Fairchild. So you can hear that and see that move. <laughs> special thing I'm doing behind the scenes. This is just a raw band, raw mics up. I have a Pro Tools rig. Um, you can see there's nothing hidden. The most complicated setup is maybe the DI, but that's something I've always done. And I know if you look at that, you're probably saying that's backwards, Manny. And uh, I would say just go ahead and call the recording police. I don't care. But... I do care in some ways, but I think this to me sounds good. This is how my system works. I have some standard waves on the guitars, DSR is on a little special thing, and I am cutting around, uh, what am I doing on this one? About 3,500. So that's it. Time delays on the rooms to give it that little bit of Albini-esque slap back. Uh, the drums are all being bust into an API 2500. So this is live tracking raw dog man. Thank you slashes for letting me showcase your band, making a little video for you. That's what's going on right there. Um, take care of yourself. Stay tuned. I got some cool stuff coming up. And if you can always check out produce like a pro with Warren Hewart. He's a dear friend. He really is great for supporting local indie producers like myself. Thank you so much.